right. Good evening. You got to turn your volume down, too. It is Monday, February 8th, and we're going to call the RTCC uh, Technical Career Center Board to meet, um, meeting to, oh my gosh, meeting to order. Our first order of business is to welcome any guests in here petitions. And I don't see any guests, but I do see a new member of the team. Felicia, if you would like to introduce. Absolutely. Um, with us today is Robin Dunnigan, who is the new administrative assistant at RTCC. And uh, we're really happy to have her on board. She's been awesome so far in her very short amount of time here. Great. Thank you, uh, Felicia, and welcome, Robin. I am going to just continue to pull this, turn this right over to you, Felicia, to continue on um, with the program changes. Sure. I don't have anything terribly new to report um, since our last meeting, although things are moving forward with some of our new initiatives. Um, most notably, our pre-tech program for the freshmen and sophomores that started this semester has 10 students in it, which is amazing, considering um, you know how quickly we kind of pulled that together. And um, it's looking really positive for next year as well. It will remain a semester program where students can come either fall or spring semester for the full day. And um, I've been working with the different schools around academics and trying to ensure that um, they're comfortable with the embedded credits or if not, like how we might work our schedules around that. And once that last piece is kind of feathered out, um, I anticipate that everything will be fine with the state of Vermont. Um, I'm already well into the process of being approved for the program. I just have to write a little something around academics and, um, and we should be good on that. So that's exciting. Um, all of the area freshmen, sophomores and juniors received brochures at home in the last week. So, um, those brochures, you know, with COVID, uh, we're trying to really think about how we're recruiting for next year. So that was an integral part of getting the information out into the hands of students and parents. Um, we have been recruiting to the different program, or excuse me, to the different partner schools over the last two weeks. We have next week students coming to visit us virtually um, in the program. So their top two choices they'll be able to, to see. Um, speaking of programs and continuing kind of on that vein, we are into the process of planning for our dental assisting program. I have reached out to Chris Wilson, who is, I think, a willing partner um, who will advise us on what we need um, to make that a successful program. We've uh, acquired the curriculum for the Career Center in Essex. For their dental assisting program, they are amazingly willing to share with us their resources and um, curriculum. So that's been really helpful. And um, just a reminder that that is a grant funded program. So it is contingent on us getting the time grant this spring. Um, and then the last program change, which I believe everybody here is aware of, is that we will be merging the digital film program and the graphic arts program into a new program called Digital Filmmaking and Media Arts. And it will have a variety of the most sought after curriculum from each program. And the hope is that with a more diverse program, we will be able to reach a, a greater student body and enrollment. Um, so I think the caveat is that, you know, if that should prove not to be the case, then it would be a program that we would consider cutting down the road. So it's it's kind of a transition year to see if that is the right approach for us. And um, we're going to have to see where that goes with enrollment. Um, so that's it in terms of new programming. Um, but right now, you know, along that line, our enrollments with the pre-tech program, we have 125, or excuse me, 124 students in our building right now, which is amazing. Um, we have moved, would you like me to just kind of go through the agenda? Okay. Um, we have moved into full in-person instruction as of January 25th. And uh, so far, so good. I think the kids are extremely excited to be able to be in school um, for four days a week. 
everybody looked really tired the first week. Um, so I think it's an adjustment for all, not only the staff, but I think also the students as we remember what school was like a year ago. Um, but it, it's been good um, with it have been, you know, sort of the more normal student things that come up when you have a larger student body on campus. So by that, just, you know, I feel like I'm more um, dealing with some more student discipline issues and things like that, that will happen as um, there are more kids in the building. So, um, but the transition has been good. The academics in particular has been uh, a really important move for us. The fact that kids were working remotely on all of their academics for a full semester was really challenging, not only for the students um, in the sense of making sure that they attended their remote classes, but also in terms of the strategies for teaching. And I think that our academic staff is extremely excited about this and to be able to have kids in their classroom is, is important. So, um, you know, as we move forward, the goal still for the tech center is to increase enrollment and um i think we're, we're heading in the right direction next year i would anticipate that the electrical program is going to increase enrollment um, as it becomes you know starts to take off with that comes challenges right now the space that uh, that program is in is a little too small um, so we will have some facilities things that we need to do this summer in order to accommodate um, a larger student body in some of these programs. So um, I think that's probably it for this moment. What's your goal for enrollment? You know, we really need to get it up to about 140, I think, to be really self-sustaining. Um, with the dental assisting program, if it were at full capacity, which being that the medical fields are pretty sought after um, and they're not everybody gets into the health careers program. I would anticipate that that program will take off maybe a bit more quickly, um, but each program can have 15 students in it. Um, so that's an additional 15 right there. And if we also are successful in how we implement our digital film, that's another 15, uh, which currently it just has four. So, so I think we're, we're close. We're right, right there. So I have two questions. Sure. Um, I read in your overview that for the pre-tech program, it looks like there are students from Northfield, Williamstown, and White River. Are there no Randolph kids attending that? There are no Randolph kids this spring. Um, we are in the process of negotiating kind of that, those academic pieces that um, that was kind of a hang up for this spring, I think, as well as the fact that with COVID, um, there was concern about sending them to our end of the building, although they would be with us all day. So I, I think, you know, I'm not sure that that concern is one that we needed to have, but the academic piece, um, given the strategic plan for the district, um, Randolph Union High School felt strongly that they wanted to keep hold of the academic pieces for the kids entering the pre-tech program. So the, the negotiation that we have made is that for next year, the students that come to us from Randolph Union High School would be in an academic class here at the high school in the first block of the day. They'd come down to us, which wouldn't be a significant change in time from the start day, you know, the start of the day for us. And then they would also have an academic class in the afternoon. And the nice piece about that is it would be year long. So they would still continue to have a foot in Randolph Union High School, even though they'd only be at the tech center for half a year. So it kind of keeps some consistency for them. Okay, before I ask my second question, sure. I'm just gonna ask other board members here if you have any questions for Felicia about RTCC. I'll be the, I'll the speaker. Are there no questions? Well, I guess I was wondering, Felicia, whether you mentioned that um, you needed this grant to launch the, the new program. What are the likelihoods that you get that grant? To be honest, that's a grant that is pretty readily given to technical schools. Um, 
I think that Jason had applied for it each year, um, probably in the foreseeable past. Um, so I I'm very confident that that grant will come through. And the, the state AOE has been awesome about working with me on, on the grant writing process and making sure that I dot my I's and cross my T's. So uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. And uh, for a student who goes through the dental assisting program, what will they have? What sort of credentials will they exit that program with? Sure. I be believe it's called the CDA, and I'm not entirely sure the uh, acronym and what that stands for, but it is um, the licensure for a dental assistant in the state of Vermont. It also is transferable, uh, you know, in the nation, but um, I think it's called different things in different states. So um, currently what's happening in our area is Chris Wilson, for example, will take folks in and he will do all of the training with them. And then they may have to do some pieces up at the Center for Technology Essex for like the X-ray and imaging and those kinds of things. I'm uh, hopeful that we'll be able to have that on site so that we will not have to you know, send students up to Essex anymore for that. Um, and it also may be that it feeds into an adult program. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of have to see how this all plays out, but um, it, it is a licensed program. It's like getting our health careers program. Those students will get an LNA when they're done. Um, so there's a test and, and all of that, but it's an industry recognized credential. So staying on that, Felicia, um, would you like a board, do you need any sort of board official vote to move forward? Anything we could do to a- Yeah, so the process for the Agency of Education requires that we have board support to pursue this new program. And so I would ask for a motion um, to, to go ahead and um, approve my pursuit of this program. So could I get a motion? Can I have a, a second? All right. So it's been a um, motion, uh, motion made by Brian, seconded by Katja. With a show of hands for those who are not here, um, are you in favor of the motion? Yes. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm in favor. That it's Rachel. Unanimous, Robin. Felicia, do you have anything else you want to share with us? Well, I think I shared most things um, other than, you know, I did make kind of quick mention of some facilities work that needs to be done. Um, we are, you know, we've got a variety of projects that we're looking at and trying to prioritize right now as we move forward. Um, my goal is to develop a five-year plan to make that happen. But the reality is we can't grow the center a whole lot without looking at our spaces. Um, and some of the spaces in particular in the mechanical core are, have not been um, sufficiently maintained um, up until this point. So we need to do a little work to get those spaces so that they're kind of up to, up to par with what's in industry and making sure that they're inviting for students. Um, Things like in the construction trades and management program, there are suspended ceilings that really don't need to be there. Um, it was back in the day when the roofing, I don't, I don't even know if I can talk in construction terms, yeah. but um, it was a different process on the roof and they've since changed that so we can take those ceiling tiles out. It was something to accommodate heat loss. Um, a lot of those tiles are just, you know, dingy, dirty, old, um, need to be taken out, you know, so cleaning up the space and, and it's not major stuff, but it's just things that need to happen. Um, the other, you know, long-term goal is, is looking at where these different programs are and the spaces, whether they're appropriate for their program. For example, um, construction trades and management is currently right next to the greenhouse. So diversified ag has to actually come through the classroom to go out to the greenhouse if they go through the building. Otherwise they would have to go outside and around. Um, so it's just thinking about, you know, like logical sort of changes that make programs more efficient. 
Well, before we move on to the consent agenda, I want to give you a huge kudos. I received the um, that the catalog that you sent, which I thought was very well done. Um, really a, a great piece. So kudos to you for that. It was great. Thank you. Um, so we do have the consent agenda, and I would look for an overall motion to accept the pieces there. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Okay. I'm in favor. So the consent agenda is approved. Now, is there reason for executive session, Lane or Felicia? Okay. So anything else? I just appreciate your support. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. So me, we're, all, we're all set. <laughs> all right. So you guys are closing out the meeting at 6.16 which is good. And then at um, 6.30, folks will be switching over uh, to the other link um, for the OSSD board meeting. So we'll see you there.